the first screen if you remember from what I've shown you was the onboarding so we need an onboarding not a home page so the home means the first the first thing to show when your application starts this is where you built it this is um, the first thing you built the first thing you want your users to see when they come in so I'm also just going to call it no it's onboarding onboarding screen right so this is what will be here basically so in order to create this I will have to explain the architecture for this project this project uses the model view controller architecture so if you don't know what architecture is architecture basically um, is about how we arrange our files in our folders how we arrange our code files our source code in um, respective folders right so this defines um, the structure of our project so if we have maybe an authentication feature then we would have the same structure in which we arranged the folders of the authentication um, the authentication feature will have that same structure in other features so if we also have a to do feature so we basically have different features so when you're building an application you break it down into different features right I show I've shown you an onboarding right where you where, where we introduce the user to the application and tell them all right this is what's gonna happen and um, this is how the application works and so forth and so on right that's an onboarding and then we have the other feature the login where you log in where you sign up or whatever and then we had the actual to do where we could add to do and so forth so when you take an, applica an application project you break it down into different features you break it down this is the this is the um, this is the way to program this is how programming works this is the point of needing a program because we see stuff in smaller chunks we take problem the problem is our project right build me a to do application we take it we break it down into smaller chunks and we solve each chunk one after another right so the first chunk that we're going to deal with the first smaller piece that we're going to deal with will be our um our onboarding so we have an onboarding feature so the model view controller architecture so the architecture is basically how we arrange the fo the files inside of the folders what folders we choose to show all right so for example if we had let me create a new folder a new file let's call it um what am i going to call it i'm going to call it um feature so we have our little features right um inside of features we are going to all right let me create these folders one after another so i don't confuse you so we're good we're going to have a directory we're going to call it features right inside of features we will have all of our features so we'll have one feature called onboarding let me make that snake case onboarding inside of the features we'll also have maybe authentication right authentication inside of the same features will also have our to do to do feature right no sorry I created a file sorry delete delete right so we have these three features so these are the sub components of our application this all three of them will come together to make a to-do application to make our full to-do application now where the architecture comes in is how we place our files because remember we have a back end we'll be talking to a back end in order to store to store the to do's that users create we'll have the part of the UI the user interface that the user sees will write code for that as well so how do we separate these and then how do we finally bring them together this defines our architecture our architecture is simply how we arrange these and what folders and the reason why it's called an architecture is because it repeats it's repeated over in every feature so even authentication we had 
a feature for 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 our UI. I'm going to call that views because this is what the user sees views or will have views. And um, when we want to talk to the back end, we have another directory called repository. See tor rate. So the repository will talk to the back end, and then the view will show the user um, what they want to see. It will show the user um, the the display, the user interface, everything. Right. This is where we put our codes that will show them everything. This is where we put our codes that will talk to the back end. But then how does the view know what's happening right so if we if the user tapped a button inside of the views that asks for um to see all or say to add a to do right to add a new task how do we know or how does our ui um know where to put that task right how, how does our ui know how to handle um, that task right so we already have the back-end code here that will store that task for us in the database when it receives it but then how does our UI talk to this person right so it's bad practice for our UI to talk directly to the back-end which is this guy so this guy isn't really the back-end so let me call him the middle the middleware right so He's the middle and he speaks directly to the back end and then our views needs a way to talk to him. But in order to show the views from this person who's receiving direct fire from the back end, we will create a middleman to talk to, to the repository. So the repository so the views say user taps a button, says add add um add uh whatever. Let me see. Let me let me give you an example with this one that we've got here. User taps a button and says, "Add add one more to this number, right? This this tap, this little tap, you see, will send um, something to the to this to the back end, right? If this was hooked onto a back end, it will send something to the back end, and it will tell the back end, all right, whatever number that you've got, right? Um, add one to that number because this is what the user wants. So, in when that's happening, this person, this view." does not directly tell the repository hey my user wants to add one to the number so tell um, the back end look we want to add one to whatever number that you've got no that does not happen right it's dangerous so what we do is we introduce a middleman called a controller the controller controls the traffic then the controllers are um, our red light right our traffic lights or our traffic warden whatever controls the traffic the flow of traffic the controller is our as it na as its name implies to control it controls so we're going to have a controller right so the controller will control the controller will be between the views and the repository so when we tap a button here we tell our controller look hey we want to add one more to 21 to make it 22 the controller will say all right give me a bit let me check my protocol let me check um what the programmer has given me if we have anything that handles that and it checks and it's it will see all right yeah we have that installed sir so then it will tell the repository hey repository um look we have this installed and this person wants it so can you give it to me let me give it to him the repository says all right hold on a bit let me talk to the back end the repository tells the back end hey and it doesn't necessarily have to be the back end doesn't necessarily have to be um a server or a database somewhere on the on the internet it could be a local some something local right on the user's device it could be something stored on the user's device so but then this is still considered the outside world right anything that goes outside of the application to get information or to send information outside of the application of our current flutter application this person handles it the repository handles it so the repository will say all right give me a bit let me talk to the outside world so the repository will tell the outside world all right look give me this right i want to add one more to 21 whatever you have right you have 21 right 
let me add one more to it so it will add one to 21 the outside world will apply and say all right when you add one to 21 the result is 22 so i have 22 now now go tell your user the repository runs back to the controller and says all right um the person responded right he said um he's got 22 now so he feeds that back to the controller and the controller feeds that back to the view to this person and this person says all right let's show it to the user and then it shows it he shows whatever number he's got to the user and um, similarly similarly when we've got an error when we've got a little error so the repository has run on his little um errands to to ask the outside world all right please have you got have you got 21 to add to my one i've got to make it 22 and then the outside world says all right you know what you've made a mistake all right this isn't how to talk to me you don't have any respect leave me alone and it's, it sends our repository back with a 404 error a 404 basically means there's there's a problem with your request right you've 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 messed up right you messed up bro so meaning that we messed up so meaning our repository has spoken to the outside world in a way that the outside world doesn't like because our repository does not know the proper way to speak so it will return with an error and then this error will be given back to the controller it will tell the controller look um you told me that we had this installed you checked your protocol and you told me that the developer taught us how to talk to the outside world but whatever the developer told you was wrong that isn't how to talk to them because they told me that I've made a big mistake and then the controller says all right give me that let me tell the user and then it feeds it back to the user that is to the view and the view will say all right user there you go there's there's, there's an error all right you've either done something wrong or the person who wrote my code has done something wrong and then it just feeds it back to the user and the user sees that that error that breaks all of our hearts when we see them the blue screen of death the 404 page not found or whatever what not what not and then it's up to you the developer to come back and know where to fix it so this is where you just go and say all right um since there's an error i know exactly where that is right that will be in our repository because the repository is the person who i taught to talk to the outside world so i have to go teach the repository how to talk to the outside world properly and then the controller only holds the list the controller is more like um, our secretary it holds the list of the things we can do right if if we can tell the outside world to add a, to add a to do then the controller is simply the person who knows all right do we have this in store yes we have add to do in store so hold on view let me tell the repository and then when the repository brings it back it just gives it back to the view so this is how an architecture works this is what an architecture is all about it's all about how you arrange your files this person talks to the user this person talks to the internet or whatever outside world factor that we've got and this person bridges that communication between the two of them so that this person doesn't directly talk to this person because sometimes the results that this person brings back is too raw for us to handle so this person will bridge that gap and handle it make it a lot be a lot prettier and send it back to this person so now now that we know